Hey everybody, it's Strict9 with Strict9GP, and welcome back to another episode of my Out of the Park 20 playthrough with the Phillies. And once again, um, we are on a playoff run. We're in September, about 26 games left to play of this 2043 season, and we're running away with the division. I mean, this is a big surprise. For me, honestly, I mean, I I thought there were some good things about the team, but I just thought, you know, being inactive in the off season like we were, I thought there's no way with Atlanta and the Mets coming on the way they've been the last few seasons and the off season the Mets had uh, last year. I thought for sure this would be the year we we took a step back, but we are right now 84 and 52. We are 16 games up over Miami, which is kind of a surprise too. Uh, that they're the team that's, I hate to say competing, really, because uh, they're not really competing for the for the division lead either. But they've been probably the closest team to us in the last two months. It's been really uh, crazy. That's probably why, part of the reason anyway, that we have had this kind of season is because it's been a pretty weak year for the East. Atlanta taking a big step back. They're 20 games under 500, so they're probably not even going to have a winning record. So it's been that kind of a year, but I'm okay with it. You know, um, this could be five years of, of winning the National League East in a row. I mean, that's a pretty good run. It's a good way to end this playthrough, I think, uh, if we can come back, you know, and, and do it again next year. But, yeah, that's that's next year. I want to get through this year first, and who knows? I mean, this could be the year we do it. This could be the year we, we win that World Series. Um, a lot of, though, what's been going on is, is really just that pitching staff. If, if you look at, uh, at, we left off last episode right before the All-Star break, and if you look at what we've been doing since then, August wasn't that great, but July we were 16-8, and eight, still winning. Uh, we're 3-2 and two so far in September, Offense has been pretty steady from where it was in the last episode, but look at this pitching. We are first in these first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven categories. Um, just, you know, the only thing where we're really struggling is bases on balls, you know, walks. We're sixth in the National League. Everything else is great. Even our defensive efficiency and zone rating is good. So, um, I think this is probably the best year um, we've had as a pitching staff. Even better than you know the pr last year and, and and what we've done in that run that we've been on. I mean, this is best pitching staff I've ever had. So that's kind of a surprise. But if you look at the individual numbers, it hasn't been so much Thompson, although he's been hot lately and he's having a good season. Uh, 256 ERA, 254. Uh, 200 plus strikeouts already, 13 wins, but got to hand it to Parker. Uh, 14 wins, low ERA. Uh, even though he's lost some ratings, he's he's just three stars now. He's having a really good year. I think, uh, you know, all in all, this was a good pickup for us. I mean, we traded with Cincinnati to get him, and we at the time I, I knew I was picking up a a, a risky salary because I did not think at his age that he would produce like this for the whole four four seasons but his worst season with us was his first and since then he's been just really one of the best pitchers in the league by by far I think he was runner up to Cy Young for two two seasons in a row and just having another good season probably if he doesn't get Cy Young this year he's probably going to be top three anyway so that's been uh, a really positive sign. And then Dar Barbarossa, I I went ahead and, and extended his contract, and he struggled a little bit. He might be the only pitcher who, who doesn't finish double digits and wins, which would be really uncharacteristic of him because he's been consistently winning, if nothing else, since he's been with us. But Outside of him, I mean, the, the bullpen's a bit solid. Uh, McAvee's still in there. I don't know if, unless I have to, I, I don't know that I'll go with him in the playoffs. And on the lineup side, we've got some guys who are starting to hit uh, 
a lot better. Paris, for the most part, has had a better second half. Um, Vegas still struggling with that average, but you know he does give you good defense and power. Pritchard though is starting to hit. He's he's uh, gotten his average up to 267. He is hot, you know, on a hot streak right now. And Eric George is, has had to come in for uh, for um, Bond, who's been injured again, and um, probably will come back before the end of the season. But uh, Bond. He's showing his age, and I think really George is the better uh, choice at this point anyway. And then Warlick, he's having a pretty okay season. Production's there. Average is down a little bit. Uh, but one of the things that I think another reason that we're winning is because we have been really lucky with injuries. Bond has been about the only guy uh, outside of, I think, Quartang, who, you know, who's, who's really not that big a factor on the team anyway. Bond has been pretty much the only big injury we've had to deal with this year. I think um, it seems like Warlick may have gone out early in the season. Let me double check. Yeah, he was out early in the season, but outside of those two, you know, it's been the only big injuries I've had to deal with, and so I'm a little bit concerned because of that. Uh, I, I may, as we get down to the end of the season, I might play around with the lineups, but I usually don't like doing that. I usually just like rolling the dice, and I know sometimes that I'll come back and bite you, but if we've got it clinched early, I know it's probably a good idea to rest some guys. But on the flip side, I would really like to get home field advantage, and right now we're just two games back of uh, Arizona. Arizona, they're on a pretty mediocre streak. It would be really nice if we could capture that, you know, get home field advantage uh, throughout the playoffs. Um and right now, I mean, we are the second best. We do have the second best record behind Arizona in uh, the major league, so we would get the home field advantage throughout the playoffs if we could uh, finish with a better record. But we're going to go ahead and get through the season, sim it through it, and I'll look at the pennant chase just to give you an idea of what we're up against. Uh, we've got 26 games left, but only nine are at home. And uh, that's not good, but the, the winning schedule or the – percentage of the remaining schedule is really low. I'm hoping that'll help us out. Uh, Marlins aren't in too big of a, well, they're, they're not in too much of a better shape, I guess you'd say. Uh, they've got one more game at home than we do. Winning percentage about the same. But uh, they're going to have a hard time. I mean, they're going to, we would have to collapse completely and they'd have to put a really good winning streak together to to overcome it um but looking at arizona they they have a pretty decent record or schedule uh half of the 26 games left are going to be at home for them Mm -hmm. and they've got a better winning percentage uh, than we do on their schedule so i may not be able to catch them uh, but hopefully that's what i'm going to go for otherwise I, i really think we got a great shot of winning the division 11 magic number of 11 with 26 to play but we're going to start on the road, or start out on the on the road against Cincinnati. Four games, I think, so that could be tough. Uh, Cincinnati, I don't think. Yeah, they're not out of it, so they're uh, they're still playing for the playoffs as well. So let's get it started. Game one, 10-4, big win. Uh, we got mm, pretty big injury there, but that's down in Clearwater. But uh, ten to four, let's see how we won this one. Georgia, good game, leading off. Uh, Dowdy, three RBIs. Warlick, two for two, two for five. McGee looked good. And Thompson, solid here. 14th win. Uh, I did call up Ings, and, man, he was hammered in this one. I uh, I did make some call-ups for September. A lot of pitchers from AAA um, may have to adjust that if, if, if they start blowing some games for us. But uh, that should put a magic number even down lower, I guess, to 10. So game two against Cincinnati. Another win, seven to three in extra innings. Cal came in, uh, in started this game three for six, three RBIs. Um, Parker pitched good, just couldn't get the decision. Hadakayama got the win. Ten wins for him in relief. That's pretty big for a closer. Uh, I really don't like to see that, honestly. So game three against Cincinnati, and we'll probably do a loss here before it's over. Nope, four to three. Uh, good, 
good win. George again playing well, two for five, scored a couple runs. Uh, Vega was two for two in this one. Paris two for four. And then Barbarossa finally gets a win, his ninth. So one win away for uh, for him to get to double digits, and that gives us all five starters uh, with ten or more wins. That'd be good to see. All right, so now game four. Are we going to sweep Cincinnati? We do, three to one. Um, Rated ball got the start here, two, two for five. How about Robolo, who I have called up to get a look at uh, at third? I'm going to give him some starts there, especially against lefties. And he's looking pretty good. Coming off the bench, and 10 at-bats, six hits, a home run, five RBIs. Um, George again, two for four in this one. Gramajo picks up his 11th win, uh, eight Ks and six innings. Uh, all in all, good rookie year from this guy. But I haven't seen much development. Um, kind of, He kind of looks like what I've got going on with uh, Barbarossa and uh, and Ken Dion. I don't know if he's going to develop much more than two and a half, maybe three stars. But it looks like his control might be getting a little bit better, so that would be at least something to hope for. Uh, but I'm going to take a look at the news. Uh, Houston's Ballantyne to retire. I'm not familiar with him. All right, so now we're going to be up against the Nationals on the road for three games. And it looks like how many have we won in a row? Um, fortunately, we've won five in a row, but, hey, Arizona's won four. So there's still a couple games, well, a game, game and a half above us with the record. But we're down, I imagine numbers down to six. I mean, we're definitely, I think, going to win again uh, in that East. Uh, but we finally lose here 4-1 to one against Washington. Warlick, Dowdy a couple of hits. Ken Dion, eh, all in all, not too bad. But uh, I guess uh, Washington was just a better team today. And then game two against Washington, another loss, 2-3. to three. Pritchard, Paris, a couple hits. Thompson, unfortunately, got the loss here. Six innings, three runs. His seventh loss of the year. Now game three, can we get a win against Washington? We don't. Two to one. Um, Parker, another good game from him, but no decision. So I, I I don't know that our chances are good at catching Arizona now for best record. But looking at the news, um, San Diego's out of the playoffs. Players of the week, Josh Atkins. This guy at 36, he's still um, having – having some good play. He was a former MVP, but that was uh, back in 2038. Had a good career, though. Uh, depends on how he finishes. He might have some Hall of Fame chances. And then Players of the Week, Sergio Ribello, uh, or Ribolo, uh, my rookie third baseman. So that's good to know. And then uh, we are second behind Arizona in power rankings. And they are... 90 and 52. We're 88 and 55. We're going a, a four-game series against New York at home. They would probably like to, to sock it to us in this one. I'm sure that they're uh, they've got much not much to play for. Uh, but we won the first one six nothing. George again two for four. Uh, he's looking good really since Bond went out. And then Barbarossa finally gets his tenth win. So he's going to finish. In double digits again, that would be his fifth year in a row doing that. Uh, so I'm really happy that that he's in the rotation, honestly. He's kind of pitcher that, you know, maybe not a true mid-rotation type starter. I think I've got him in my third spot, but he just gives you wins. You know, he's, he's just been doing that ever since we had him. And I know we had a trade proposal, but uh, I'm not going to really think too much about that right now. It was a pretty decent reliever, but I think we're going to be okay there. And uh, Bitsko, at 41 years of age, he's going to retire. Let me see what kind of career this guy had. 2,000-plus uh, hits, 364 home runs. All right, so game two against New York, 5-1. to one. So we're back winning now. That's good to see. Uh, Paris, a good game here, 3-4. for four. McGee looked good. Gramajo, 12th win, 7 shutout innings. Now, game three against New York, four to three and 14. Um, Pritchard, two for three, drove in three. 
uh, few guys with a couple hits, but uh, pitching wise, Dion got the start, looked good, but didn't get the decision. And Clark has been up and down, unfortunately. Uh, Buck, though, guy that uh, three star starting pitcher in, in the minors, he's looked good since I called him up. I would really rather have him, like if I make him as a uh, reliever, for instance, it's about the same. He's got good stuff, though. I'd really like to see him over um, McAvee in, in in the playoffs if I can do that. And then I don't know, though, if <clears throat> there's that rule about they have to be on the roster. I don't know if I called him up early enough. And so now game three against four gets New York, and we lose three to seven. And I'm hoping that's not Thompson, but I think it is. Uh, his eighth loss, no earned run, so we had a pretty uh, poor, I guess, defensive uh, game. But uh, take a look at the news now. Another trade proposal. No, it's expired. Uh, Joe Bowler retires. Not familiar with him. And Arizona, they, they win the West. We win the East. So five years in a row winning the National League East. Great just a great run for us, and um, I'm still kind of surprised. I know I've said that enough, but I, I just did not see it coming. And I tell you, George is playing so well right now that I am just going to let Bond uh, come off the bench. I think I'm going to leave uh, George starting, and I don't really want to mess up. Uh, mess his game up he's uh, he's like what hitting 273 he's hit a cold streak but uh, I still I still want to leave him in there all right so now we got two games against New York that's probably the Yankees I, I, I would guess let me double check yep it is the Yankees but it's at home game one we win nine to three big win there Bond did get the start I guess to give George a break uh, three hits and six at bats Pritchard, another good game from him. Paris, a good game, three for five. And then Parker, a complete game here, 15th win of the season. So that ties him with his highest win total since he joined the team. Uh, incredible year from him. And then game two against New York, looks like it was rained out. So we're going to have to make that one up. And Gene Warlick day-to-day -day for three days. This is what I'm talking about. As we get down to the uh, to the wire here, should I give these guys a break? Probably. Let me take a look at the lineup with Warlick. Let me put Atchison in there. Uh, well, is Bond? Bond can play right field. Let me put Bond in there and let him play, let's say, every fourth game down the stretch against righties. And... Uh, Not much of a break, but maybe it'll help him out. So back to the news. Arturo Trujillo hit for the cycle. Players of the week, Ben Dooley and Trujillo, uh, Colorado. And then it's still one and two between us and Arizona. But I think um, we're at 92 wins. They're at 96. So I think it's just a given that they're going to finish the best with the best record. At least we will be at home in that opening series so uh, could be worse and if we do make the world series we should hopefully have home field advantage against whoever we face all right so let's finish this uh this is going to be a makeup game against new york we lose two nothing and barbarossa took the loss here he didn't look bad but uh eight innings just two earned runs and now we're on the road against the mets four games looks like game one Rained out three games, sorry. And Yankees win the National League East, or American League East. So we split the doubleheader with the Mets, won the first one 10 to 2. George, another good game, three for four, scored a couple. Uh, Gutierrez, two for four, drove in a couple. Robolo, two for five. And then Thompson got his 15th win, seven innings, just a uh, one earned run. You know, he may repeat as the, the Cy Young. It's hard to say. If I'm looking at where he f fits in in terms of pitcher 
war, which I, you know, I think that's what it's going to be based on. He's not even showing in the top three. So I think more than likely he's not going to get it this year, but uh, still a good season from him. And then in game two, uh, Gutierrez, four for five, Pritchard, three for five, but Dion hammered a little bit, eight runs, uh, Ings really hammered. Uh, I think Ings is going to have to be kind of put on a tight leash here. I don't think he's he's going to be uh, le- I'm going to have to avoid high leverage with him. And now game three against New York. Can we at least win the series? And we do. Nine to one. A big win there. And Pritchard three for four. Paris three for five. But Paris is injured. And that's that's kind of what I'm worried about. And I'm going to put him on the shelf um, and try to get through, get him through to the playoffs. But in this game, Gramajo, man, another great game. Seven innings, three hits, no walks, eight Ks, no runs. Uh, man, what a great rookie season, honestly. I don't even know if that's – if you look at, uh, like, Zach Thompson, that's about as good as uh, Zach Thompson's rookie season, right? No, it wasn't. Sorry, he did have 19 wins. But still, Gramajo's got a better ERA. Uh, Gramajo's – Wins above replacement is better, so uh, I'm surprised really at uh, at the year that he's had. But get back to the news here. Paris is going to be out for three weeks day to day. That sucks. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust these lineups. I will put Cal and then Tyler. Uh, let's see, every fourth game, Tyler is a guy I'm, I'm taking a look at. Uh, Yeah, so Cal's going to get the start here. Um, Cal is, uh, I think, pretty adequate as, as a starter. Tyler, though, against lefties, not so much All right now. Um, again, how did that happen? Oh, okay. So um, I, I think I'll DH Tyler here and... Maybe bind. And then I don't think, you know, this is probably not going to be that big of a, a deal in terms of him there. In terms of, uh, the DH. I don't think we're going to see much of a DH. The re- remaining. Well, we got Chicago coming up. Is that the Cubs? Yeah, it's the White Sox. So we are going to see DH. Um, St. Louis out of the playoffs. Detroit. Nah, they want. They want Steve Bond. Is Detroit even in the playoffs? That does not make any sense. They're eliminated. I. I don't get that. Uh, All right, so game one against the White Sox, we lose six to seven. Um, unfortunately, Tyler looked good as as a DH. Cal one for three, but they played Paris. Uh, I didn't really want him to do that. Uh, Parker was hammered a little bit in this game, five runs and four and two thirds. And now game two against Chicago, we win nine to seven. Uh, Warlick was three for five. Action got some game time here. Uh, let's see. First base, Tyler, two for three, drove in three. Barbarossa, though, hammered. Six earned, six runs, four earned, and two and a third, but the bullpen held it together for us. Had a Kiyama, his 36 save. And now game three against Chicago, we lose five to six. Uh, Bond, three for five. Uh, Cal held hitless in this one. Paris did come off a pitch hit. Um, Thompson didn't get the win here. Five and two thirds, just two earned runs. Clark blew it in the bullpen, though. So now, players of the week: Dooley and Padilla. Uh, power rankings: We're first, so we jump. Uh, we jumped over Arizona. I'm hoping that means Arizona is 
started losing. Yeah, they've lost three in a row, but six games left for them, seven for us. Um, we're three games back. I don't, I don't think we can do this, but we'll see. I mean, I'm, I'm going to take a look to how we're doing. Fourteen and ten. Okay, September hasn't been terrible. I was starting to think, man, we've really started tanking this this month, but we haven't completely tanked. Uh, but now we're going to be playing Atlanta. They're probably playing for pride. Game one on the road. We win seven to two. Uh, Gutierrez is a good game. Three for five. Drove in four. Dowdy four for five. Um, it looks like Dion got the win here. A good, solid game from him. Ings, though, whew, I think I'm just going to have to send Ings back. Uh, he's out of option years, though. He is really, you know, I think he's he's probably frustrated. Uh, maybe that's the deal. But uh, I can't pitch him if he's doing that. But at the same time, I, I don't want to wave him at this point. So let me... I'll keep him up there. Hopefully, he won't cost us too much. Game two against Atlanta, four to one, big win. Uh, Dowdy, Pritchard, Cal, Vega, all with two hits. Scramajo, uh pitched good, didn't didn't get the win though. Hadakiyama's uh, thirty seventh save. Game three against Atlanta, uh, we lose one nothing. So kind of uh, that kind of hurt. So let's see here. George, another good game from him. Did I see an injury here pop up? Oh, man, Pritchard's injured. You know, that's the big thing. That's that's the dilemma uh, that you go with. So let me take a look at the news because I saw something here. Uh, I thought I had extended him. Pretty sure, yeah, I did extend him. So personnel, yeah, I did extend him. So... I'm not sure why that news article came up. It's saying that he's hoping to stay. Um, take a look briefly at the player development here. So we got Pete Parker, who actually picked up some control ratings. Uh, Nate McAvee, all but done. Um, he hasn't really hurt us too much this year, but, man, thankfully he's he's a free agent. Had a Kayama losing some ratings there. Uh, Joe Clark improved. Control looks like. Brennicky looking good. Uh, Barbarossa, though, lost some ratings. That sucks. Um, Chris Benefield, Villalobos, Cortang picked up a couple ratings. I'm, I'm interested. Oh, man. Warlick lost some ratings. Colvin uh, looks good. Mike Hayes, Juanatero. I'm not seeing any of my big prospects here. Uh, Cravens, unfortunately, he, he got injured. Um, he was a, probably one of my better pitching prospects going into the year, but he's been injured a lot this season, so he, he might be uh, pretty much done in terms of a prospect. So the Mets wanting to trade O'Valley here. Uh, that's not going to happen. So top hitters for the month, Dooley for Cleveland, uh, Sarnik for the Dodgers. Pitchers of the month, Francis for a Detroit, a young guy there, 24. And then Luis Lara for the Braves, Rookies of the Month, Bess and Devers uh, for Atlanta there. All right, so um, so we looked at this one. Yeah, Parker did take a tough loss there. So game three against Atlanta, we win. That gives us 98 wins for the year. Um, Good pitching performance here from Barbarossa. Hadakiyama's 38 save. I'm just waiting on that Pritchard injury. I hope that it's, oh man, he's day to day for four weeks. So, you know, that's kind of what I didn't want to see and, you know, had, had the fears about. But, uh, same time, I, I just, I wanted to catch Arizona, and that's not going to happen now. So let's um, go to the lineups, and let's take Pritchard out for at least the rest of the year. 
We're not gonna we're not gonna save them too much, I know. But uh, we got three games against Miami at home. I don't think Miami's in the playoff picture right now. Well, barely. They're one and a half games back of that last wild card. So game one, seven nothing. We win pretty easily. Uh, Dowdy a good game. Hatcherson. Dowdy overall had a good year for us. Um, not sure what to do with him now because I think Ray Ball is almost ready to start, but um, it's hard to give up on a guy who's hitting well over 300. And look at this performance from Thompson. Seven and a third, four hits, two walks, 16 Ks, and uh, no runs. 267 strikeouts. That's his career high, or 264. That's how he's probably going to finish. He's not going to get another start. But four seasons into his career... 70 wins, a sub-3 ERA, 20 wins above replacement, 854 strikeouts. So, yeah, this is easily the best pitcher I've ever developed uh, in this game. And I just hope he stays healthy. He's listed as durable. He's going to put up a lot of records for Philadelphia, I think. Uh, maybe one of the best ever Phillies pitchers, you know, with those kind of numbers. So game two against Miami, eight to one. Ken Dion now out for four to five weeks, and he's out. I'm gonna have to put him on the on the DL. Uh, luckily though, um, it could be worse. I mean, that's not the worst we could happen. And and here's Paris. He's gonna be available in another week. Uh, Pritchard though, I'm gonna to have to really baby him. I think in the playoffs. And now we got game three against uh, Miami. This is going to end the season, and we win seven to nothing. That was a uh, pretty much a statement series against the Marlins, and some good offense here from Atchison. Even though uh, you know he hasn't been all that great this year, he, he's I don't know. He's giving me what I thought. You know, it's hard to it's hard to. Uh, He's a bench player. I knew that's what he's going to be. So you know, he might be able to play some in the playoffs and, and not kill us. Um, Tyler looked good. Uh, man, he was looking. This is an interesting, you know, he, he's an interesting story because he's his numbers and ratings don't reflect the kind of performance he always puts up. Uh, he's a former first, fifth-round pick. He has good defense. But he's been solid at every minor league stop. That he's been in and hey his first call up in the majors he looks good so if he would just develop a little bit uh, at 25 I think he could he might develop into a starting first baseman and then Gamajo picked up his 14th win great rookie season from this guy um, 25 I mean he could you know he could perhaps pick up some ratings in the offseason. That would be great if it happens. But uh, look at the end of the year news. So Thompson, you know, got some notice there with that 16 Ks. Um, we'll look. Oh, Rocky Stromain injured. Uh, he's out for two weeks for Kansas City. He was having a pretty decent season for them. And so Astros win the American League West. Players of the Week, oh man, Suzuki, he's coming into the playoffs hot. He's one of the best players offensively in the National League by far, and I, I hope we don't have to face him. And power rankings, we finish ahead of Arizona, but even at 101 wins, God, yeah, just one game back of them. That really sucks. I'm hoping... It would be nice if they, they lose in that first round. Um, and then we face either, what, uh, Colorado or it's probably going to be Milwaukee, Los Angeles. Uh, that's, they're going to go down to a one-game playoff. But look, we'll look at the – let's look at how the season played out for um, the American League first. New York in. Uh, they had the best record in the, in the American League. Kansas City is in. Chicago, Cleveland – uh, they're going to have to have a playoff there for the final wild card. Seattle's in, and Houston's in. Um, individually, this guy Luren, I fifty-four home runs. I don't know. 
Um, he has been a pretty decent player throughout his career, but not not to that level. Uh, Louis Granda, uh, he he lost it a little bit this year, uh, coming off uh, an MVP back to back MVP seasons. He had a he had a step back, and then Mike Little at Tampa Bay, good season from him. He might either him or Juan Castillo. Castillo is a, is a good player for Cleveland. One of those two will probably be the M- MVP. And uh, Guardado, 19 wins. Uh, that kind of calmed down a little bit. Several guys were on pace for mid-20s uh, at mid- midway through the season. And then National League, we win going away uh, in, in the National League East, 20 and a half games up over Miami. Chicago wins pretty easily uh, against Milwaukee. Arizona they ran away with it too, uh, but it's going to be either Colorado. Well, Colorado's in the wild card. It's going to be the the Dodgers or the, the Brewers for that last spot. Uh, individually, a low year in terms of batting average, three twenty won it. Low year in terms of home runs, uh, thirty nine won it. That was Eric Savello uh, for the Mets. So I guess yeah, they can kind of be happy with that signing. They're paying him a lot of money though. Uh, we didn't have many leaders uh, showing up except for Gutierrez and stolen bases. ERA Thompson finished third. Wins uh, Castillo at 19 was the leader. Zach Thompson second strikeouts. He didn't manage to finish second in wins above replacement behind uh, Areza. But I think, man, with those numbers, I think Areza is probably going to win it for Milwaukee. And uh, that was it for the leaderboards. Um, not that great, honestly. And then in terms of how we did going down the stretch, I think our offense in some places looked better, but uh, home runs and walks, we kind of fell off the pace. But that pitching staff, first in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight categories for the national in the National League, top five in all pitching and defensive categories, um, as dominant – a pitching staff as I've ever had. Probably the most dominant pitching staff I've had definitely in this playthrough. Probably as far back as I can remember, I don't think I've had a pitching staff that good. I'm hoping that's going to be enough to get us through the playoffs now. We're going to have Dion out. Uh, I think if I'm looking at the playoff roster and we're not there yet, uh, I'm hoping I can keep Buck up there, and if he's needed, he'll be that fourth, fifth starter that uh, – We'll replace Dion in the playoffs, but that's what we got to get ready for. And I'll, I'll set everything up offline. We'll come back and we'll go through the playoffs. Still debating how I'm going to do that. Uh, if you watched last season's playoff episodes, it got really frustrating really quick. So I don't want to go through that again. But it, you know, it still would be more satisfying if I'm playing them out. So I, I haven't figured out how I'm going to handle this, but. I'll know that by next episode, and that's where we'll be. We'll be next episode. We'll be playing for that division series, hoping that we can get back to the World Series and win it all this year. As always, thanks for watching, liking, commenting, uh, subscribing, and I'll see you next episode.